Sitting atop his chiseled throne at the peak of his ornate castle waits the King of the Fey. Betrayed by his council, scorned by his son, and corrupted by the root, his madness knows no end. But amidst the chaos, lies opportunity. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today we're revealing the secrets of the one true king. In typical Gunfire Games fashion, almost everywhere you look in the new Awakened King DLC, you'll find traces of secrets to uncover. New characters you meet like Laywise the Scribe are intimately tied to a number of rewards, but even familiar faces like the Red Prince and the Feastmaster have mysteries to unravel within the DLC. We'll touch on all of them, but in my mind, there's only one place we can start as we begin to peel back the layers of secrets surrounding the new content, the One True King. Before we dive headfirst into all of the secrets the DLC has to offer, it should be no surprise, this video is chock full of spoilers. If you're still trying to work your way through the DLC and you want to experience it for yourself, we'd highly advise saving this video for a later watch. Now the truth is, there's a lot of misinformation out there about how many rewards are truly tied to the antagonist of the Awakened King content, but we are here to set that record straight. There are multiple ways to kill the one true king, and depending on how you kill him, when you talk to Nimue, and what arrangements you make with both parties, the loot you receive at the end of your adventure will vary. Before we step foot into the One True King's chambers, we need to stop by the hollowed halls where the now dead Fey Council reside. There you'll see a rather grotesque scene of death and impalement, but within their suffering comes some loot. Shoot the bodies of each of the council members and one of them will drop an amulet, the cost of betrayal. This reduces the max relic charge to one and increases all damage by 20% when the wearer, you in this case, has one relic charge. It also increases incoming damage by 20% when the wearer has no relic charges, and after 30 seconds, players regain one relic charge. Once we're done with the council, it's on to the king, so to start, let's keep it simple. In order to receive the Tormentor's Pommel, which is a crafting material used to create the melee weapon Wrathbringer, players need to defeat the one true king when he is not empowered. To do this, you simply need to kill all or close to all of the Dran during the intermission phase. If you mess up, it's no big deal, as the empowerment does wear off. Now, to identify if the boss is empowered, look for the flames on his chest. If you're not paying attention to the mechanics of the fight, it's very easy to accidentally empower the boss, but the empowerment does fall off, which is why there's a lot of confusion around the source of this kill. It has nothing to do with breaking his hammer, killing him while he's kneeling, or anything of the sort. You just need to kill him when he's in his standard form. Your reward, Wrathbringer, is a big, beefy mace that we cover in our 5 Insane DLC Weapons video, so go check that out. On the flip side, killing the king while he's empowered will reward you with the Agony Spike crafting material, which you can turn into the interesting long gun, Monarch. Again, we talk about this at length in our DLC Weapons video. To activate the alternate kill on the one true king, you need to wait for him to enter that intermission phase. He'll levitate into the air and begin to glow, triggering the start of the phase. At this time, a bunch of Dran adds will spawn, and you don't want to kill them. Run around, avoiding the enemies and energy blasts alike until the phase is over. The One True King will send out a huge shockwave which you need to avoid, killing the Dran and absorbing their power. You'll notice up to three flames will ignite on the boss's chest. If you see a flame, that means the boss is empowered and you can kill him. This is really all about timing. We found that bringing the boss close to or around one health bar was what we needed to do before hitting that intermission phase. You have all the time in the world to get him set up, so don't rush. Once his intermission phase is over and he's empowered, he'll regain some health. But if you save your cooldowns and blast him as soon as he soaks up the Dran energy, you should be able to kill him before his empowerment wears off. The key is to land that killing blow while one of the flames is active on his chest. That will net you with the alternate reward, the Agony Spike. When first approaching the One True King, he'll go into some detail about his betrayal, how he captured the goddess Nimue, and will present you with a choice. Kill the betrayer Nimue, or be killed yourself. If you refuse and choose to kill the One True King without ever talking to Nimue, you'll also be able to receive the Jewel of the Beholden Ring. Once you defeat the boss, return to Nimue and share the news that his corruption has been purged from the world, and she'll reward you with the item. When equipped, this ring increases your mod damage by 15% for 10 seconds every time you use a relic. If you decide to seek out Nimue before engaging in the One True King boss fight, you'll have a choice to make. You can either kill her or double cross the king and spare Nimue's life. If you agree to spare her life, she'll give you the quest item Nimue's Vow. 
When you fight the one true king, this item will automatically take the final few percentage points of his life, transforming into Nimue's Blood Marred Vow. Take this item back to the Goddess of the Fey and you'll receive Gift of the Unbound. This amulet disables all negative effects of Burden Rings and restricts maximum health gained by 20% per effect disabled. It's a really fascinating amulet that can be woven into some pretty interesting builds, but it really depends on how many Burden Rings you're looking to exploit. If you choose to follow through with your loyalty pledge to the king, you can kill Nimue, receiving an item immediately after slaying the goddess. Once the deed is done, you'll receive the relic, Broken Heart, which has a 50% innate use speed bonus. On use, it sets your current health to 50% of your max health over 0.25 seconds. However, the joke's on you as your act of loyalty will still provoke a fight with the one true king. There's actually one more quirky secret tied to the boss fight. While fighting the one true king, if you're wearing the Burden of the Divine Ring, which you most likely found during your travels in either the Great Sewer or Tiller's Rest, you'll receive another ring, Burden of the Departed. This reduces your total relic charges by 33%, but increases all damage dealt by 10%. To be clear, Burden of the Divine is not a new item and has been in the game since day one, so head back to the Great Sewer or Tiller's Rest if you don't have it in your inventory. Now, the final secret tied to the One True King has to do with his son, the Red Prince. The long and short of it is this. Once you kill the final boss, you'll need to head to the Gilded Chambers map, pay the tribute to the Red Prince, and then return back to the throne room to claim your spot as his champion. There is so much more nuance to it than that, but you better believe we've got a full video breaking that down, so go check it out if you don't have the Crimson Guard armor already. With eight secrets out of the way, we're not even close to done peeling back the layers of this DLC, so let's forge ahead. We'll head back to the beginning of the Forlorn Coast map, into the sewers, and talk to the king's former scribe, Laywise. This fey is currently lying low as to not draw the ire of the one true king but beneath his humble facade is actually a character tied to a good number of secrets. Throughout your travels across the forlorn coast, keep your eyes peeled for a strange book on the ground. This misplaced memoir is your key to unlocking a number of items from the scribe. This is one of those secrets that will require multiple playthroughs to fully capitalize on, so hear me out. If you return the book to Laywise without opening it, he'll be so thankful he'll reward you with the Index of the Scribe Amulet. This is an excellent item that increases mod and skill weak point damage by 35%, perfect for those players that are rocking highly precise damage builds. If you inspect the misplaced memoir, you'll notice an interaction with the latch. Opening up the book will reveal the bookbound medallion. If you bring the item to Laywise and give it back to him the first time he asks you, you'll be rewarded with the burden of the Silist, which reduces ammo reserves by 25%, but increases mod and skill damage by 15%. If you decline the first offer to return the medallion, but take Laywise up on the second offer, you'll be rewarded with the Ring of Infinite Damage, which sadly doesn't live up to the name. This ring simply increases your fire rate by 8%. Finally, if you decide to open the memoir and keep the amulet, you can use it to unlock a secret room in the Chamber of the Faithless map. Once you reach the World Stone, head to the right and through the chamber until you reach a locked door. Interact with it using the medallion as the key, and it'll open. Inside the new room, you'll find the Paper Heart Relic. On use, this heals for up to 100% of the player's current health over 0.25 seconds. Players gain one stack per 10% of health restored, but after 15 seconds, 10% of your health is removed per stack. However, kills remove one stack. It's a bit of a convoluted relic, but hey, I didn't say all the rewards were going to be stellar. Laywise is also connected to a secret from the base game. If you're adventuring through the One True King storyline and you happen to also have the Great Hall Dungeon, you can unlock a few more secrets. First, you'll need to speak to Laywives in the sewer. This will trigger the condition for the reward. Then, adventure through Losum until you reach the Great Hall map. There, you'll engage in the event and receive the Feastmaster's leftovers, which you can give to Laywives, insisting that he take. In exchange, you'll receive the White Glass Bead. This ring applies a shield for 15% of your max health every time you perfect dodge, lasting for 10 seconds. The Feastmaster's leftovers can also be used back in Ward 13 for another, less savory reward. If you turn the quest item into Dwayne and give him around three hours to cook, he'll reward you with the Meat Shake, a concoction that reduces damage by 8%. Honestly, that's not a bad concoction to have, especially if you're trying to tackle Apocalypse difficulty. Laywise was certainly the key to a good number of secrets, but 15 items in, 
and we still have more to discover. And these really don't fall into any particular category, but all tie back to the overall world of Losum and the One True King DLC. As you make your way through the Forlorn Coast, on your way to the castle, you'll stumble across a number of secrets. The first is a trait, Dark Pact, which reduces your Grey Health regeneration rate by negative 9% at level 1, up to negative 90% at level 10. If you're building around Grey Health modifiers, this is a must-have trait. To unlock Dark Pact, you must ring three bells found in different locations across the Forlorn Coast. The first bell is located right next to the small checkpoint in the Drowned Wen right before the canal section with all the boats. Ringing that bell will summon a wave of Fey warriors which need to be fend off. The second bell can be found further up the hill closer to the castle. At some point you'll enter a big village square with a large axe-wielding enemy and a small pack of dogs. Kill them and towards the back of the area is another bell. Ring that and another wave of Fey warriors will attack. The third bell is arguably the trickiest to find. Once you enter the king's palace, you'll want to head up the stairs but then drop down to the area below. This will give you access to a staircase that brings you back outside. Turn immediately right and follow that path to the cliffside. There you'll find the final bell. Shoot it and you'll unlock Dark Pact. If you're hunting traits, I have to assume by this point you've unlocked the Ritualist archetype and its gear. And if that's the case, you can scoop up another Forlorn Coast secret item, Band of the Fanatic. This is actually a staple of our insanely powerful Ritualist build, so if you haven't checked out that video, definitely give it a look. Getting this item is rather simple. When you first get into the Forlorn Coast, make sure you have the entire Ritualist set of armor equipped. If you don't know where to unlock the Ritualist or the armor, you guessed it, we've got a video for that too. Wearing the armor, head down to the docks where the Preacher is giving a sermon. Instead of attacking, you'll be able to interact with the Dran that's on the pulpit. Wait for him to finish, interact with him, and he'll reward you with the Band of the Fanatic, which increases status effect damage by 25%, and reduces status effect durations by 65%. At this point, it's time to dive into some dungeons, and I can't think of a better place to start than the Ethereal Manor, an injectable found usually within the Sunken Haunt, but can spawn as part of any loathsome fire map. Inside the manor, you'll have the opportunity to open one door at a time, and for the purposes of this first secret, you're looking for the quest item, Strange Talisman. You'll need to peer through the window of each door and look for that iconic red glow of an item because you can only open one door per instance of the ethereal manor. Once you find the door, unlock it and grab the item. If you rinse and repeat this process, finding the strange talisman each time you enter the manor, you'll notice it getting bloodier. The fourth time you pick up the quest item, your bloody talisman will transform into the death-soaked talisman, an amulet that increases all damage by 5%, for each entity within 20 meters suffering from a unique negative status effect. This stacks five times, which means a whopping 25% increase to all damage if you maximize its potential. The Ethereal Manor is also tied to the DLC's biggest secret, Anguish, a handgun that functions as a shotgun, rifle, and machine gun all in one package. In all honesty, trying to explain the steps to unlock this weapon here would be rather challenging and would add another eight minutes to the video so instead, I'll point you towards our full anguish guide. And look guys, I get it. It's a lot of other videos that we're pushing you to, but that's all in an effort to save you time. We put dozens of hours into each project, and if we already have the content mapped out in another video, we're going to point you in that direction. It saves you time, keeps us from repeating ourselves, and in the end, it's a win-win. Moving from a creepy manor to a creepy lighthouse, our next set of secrets takes us to the derelict lighthouse map where we'll find two items of interest. As you progress through the zone, you'll come upon a warehouse. Inside are two aberrations that you'll need to defeat in order to claim the lighthouse key. With your key in hand, you can head towards the lighthouse proper and unlock two secrets within that very same run. If you head across the bridge and into the actual spire of the lighthouse, you'll run into a locked door. Using the lighthouse key will give you access to a new area and the lighthouse keeper's ring. While equipped, you'll automatically generate 3 mod power per second for each entity within 10 meters suffering from a negative status effect, stacking up to 5 times. Not bad. If you go into your inventory and inspect the lighthouse key, you can interact with it, flipping the guard to reveal the other side of the key. From your current location, head back to the bridge and find the path that leads off to the left side of the lighthouse. Drop down into the basement and voila, a second locked door. Use that flipped lighthouse key to open up the workshop, and there you'll be able to pick up the Sparkfire Shotgun. I love this weapon, and honestly think it's one of the best in the game. 
it fires incendiary rounds and doesn't have a baked in mod, so you have total freedom to build it up however you'd like. We go into this gun in both our Ritualist build guide video as well as our 5 Insane DLC weapons video, so either one will give you more in-depth information about how to use the gun effectively. The final set of three secrets all take place in the Pathway of the Fallen dungeon, and I'll be honest, finding the final secret was a really cool moment. When you enter the zone, you'll start on the gray side of Losum. Progress through the zone and move through the hedge maze until you reach the Wraith Liege Aberration. Killing it will net you the Memoriam Medallion Key. From this point, you have two choices. If you go back to the central area of the zone, you'll be able to use the medallion to open up the mausoleum. Inside, you'll be rewarded with the Gift of the Melancholy, an amulet that increases all damage dealt by 25% when your stamina is at 100% for 7 seconds. You can also take that same medallion and unlock a second item. Head back to the Wraith Liege area and make your way into the building. Smash the painting, leaning up against the wall to reveal an opening. Head inside, up the stairs, and at the end of the walkway will be a portal that ports you to the golden side of the zone, the Walk of Remembrance. Clear out the enemies on the opposite side until you can reach the mausoleum again, and you can use the same medallion to open up the door, granting you a different reward, the Gift of Euphoria. This amulet grants you 5% critical chance for 7 seconds whenever you spend 25 stamina, stacking up to 5 times. The thing here is that you can't get both items in one run, so you will need to re-roll Losum to get this dungeon to spawn at least twice if you want both amulets. While in the Walk of Remembrance map, you'll want to dig into your bags and pop on your Crown of the Red Prince, and yes, we have a video showing you how to find that and many more secrets in our video about the Imposter King. This will reveal a new pathway within the mausoleum, leading you down into a shrine area where you can pick up the cremated soul ash. This crafting material can be turned into Ava in Ward 13 for the Night Guard weapon mod, which summons a pair of ethereal swords that engage enemies with both melee and ranged attacks. There's also some really cool lore in this area about the Red Prince's mother, so if you're a story junkie, definitely check out this spot. And there you have it, the most elusive secrets of the One True King revealed. If you have any questions about the secrets we talked about today, let us know in the comments section down below and we'd be happy to help you out. Friends, we have loved covering Remnant 2 and we will have much more coming your way when DLC 2 and DLC 3 hits, so hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. It's still the single best way to help channels like ours reach new audiences. You can also join us on Discord if you want to hang out with the team, talk about great games, and enter for your chance to win tons of free prizes. That link, as always, is below. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.